Hi, my name is Ben Freer, and today I'll discuss the importance of the I-94 for E-2 visa investors and their families. The I-94 is the document that tells you two very important things. It tells you how long you can stay in the United States, and it lists your current status. You can find this document by simply Googling I-94, and this page will pop up. You have to enter your passport number, your birth date, and when you do that, you should see your I-94, which looks like this. So let me explain why this document is so important in the E-2 visa context. Most of you probably know that as an E-2 investor, you get E-2 status in two different ways. You can apply for the E-2 visa from outside of the United States, which is typically the best method, or you can apply for the E-2 status via a change of status application if you're already lawfully within the United States. If you are applying for a change of status, your current status must be valid at the time that you apply. So if your I-94 expires on January 1st and you send in your application to change your status on January 2nd, you will typically be out of luck unless an exception applies to your situation. So needless to say, it's very important to keep your eye on the expiration date of your I-94 if you're thinking of applying for a change of status. Most of my clients will vastly underestimate the amount of time that it takes to pull an application together. So planning ahead and starting the process far in advance of the expiration of your I-94 will save you a lot of headaches and a lot of anxiety. The I-94 is also extremely important for those who already have an E-2 visa. When you enter the US using an E-2 visa, your period of authorized stay will not be correlated to your E-2 visa validity period. I know that sounds weird, so let me give you an example. Let's say you're a Canadian citizen. You want to move to Florida or Texas where you have started a business. Your E-2 process goes smoothly, and after your E-2 visa is stamped into your passport, you notice that it will be valid for five years. So if you are a Canadian citizen, you can use that E-2 visa to enter the United States as many times as you like during that five year period. But here's the weird part. You get two years of status each time you use your E-2 visa to enter the United States. So if you have four years of visa validity remaining, you get two years. If you have four months of visa validity remaining, you get two years. If you have four weeks of validity remaining, you get two years. In order to keep track of how long you can remain in the US, you should know your I-94 expiration date. Here is what might happen if you aren't careful. The investor spouse leaves the US frequently. They have business interests in Canada, so they go back and forth fairly often. So they're gonna be fine. But the other spouse does not leave. They're settled in and enjoying the better weather. And if they don't watch their I-94 expiration date, their I-94s could expire. And when that happens, they start to accumulate unlawful presence. If their period of unauthorized stay lasts more than 180 days, the non-investor spouse will be subject to a three-year bar for re-entering the United States when they eventually leave the country. And they won't be able to extend their status from within the United States either, since they will no longer be in authorized status. If the unauthorized period lasts more than one year, then the bar to re-enter the United States will be a whopping 10 years. So the key takeaway here is pretty simple. Pay close attention to the expiration date that's listed on your I-94. I hope this information was helpful. If you did enjoy this video, please like it or pass it along to someone who could benefit from it. Thank you for your time.